Hi All everyone, right. welcome Hi. back. Welcome back. Today Hi. we have Jerome. Hi. Uh, tell us a little bit about what his extreme hobby is, uh, which is what you see behind us. Land Rover, a collector of Land Rover. What do you, actually, what does this hobby actually gain? Like, in, in uh, I think, I think uh, there are two parts of this hobby. Uh, it's it's really about um, uh, classic car, classic car uh, ownership. Okay. And the classic other thing, of course, ownership. is the adventure that it brings you to. Uh, so what's different about uh, owning a Land Rover is that you you actually kill two birds with one stone. You actually have a classic car, and you have a classic car that actually brings you on adventures. <laughs> so short of having like a you know you can have an MG or a Spitfire that that you you go onto car shows in Singapore and most of the time it's being I mean it's, it's being kept in a garage or a covered space Land Rover itself uh, being a classic car uh, it will never look too dirty being a Land Rover and it will never look out of place you know it could be in the middle of the jungle on a farm you know it could be even at a classic car show it will never look out of place a little bit of history on this uh -huh. uh, it was first registered in Singapore in 1962 and the first owner, the very first owner that actually registered it is actually uh, the Ku Koo, the Koo family, the Ku Teh Pot family. Oh, Ku Teh Pot. Yes. Oh, okay. So he actually registered. Yes, he's the, the... So what happened was that then uh, the, the tycoons of those days, they had a lot of plantations, a lot of estates. So uh, this was the vehicle that I think they bought and then they used it to travel within the S like that when they went to went into the plantation or that yeah. Wow, so, this is so cool. Yeah, so this vehicle is an original Singapore vehicle. Uh, 2010. Okay. So the time when I got it, uh the vehicle was already uh in between the first owner which was Mr. Ku. Until then there huh. were probably about sixteen different owners already. Oh okay. okay. So uh, he had gone through a lot of modifications. Uh, okay. A lot of people put in a lot of modern modifications like air conditioning. Yeah, uh. Uh, they you know they changed out the panels and all that. Uh, so what I did in the end was that uh, this specialist in 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 Thailand in Bangkok. Uh -huh. uh, they they were actually able to make all the panels uh, handmade. They were able to make all the panels handmade. handmade. But that said, there was still a lot of small other fittings and all that that were. That basically they can't do. So mm. it took me about three to four years to make all the necessary parts uh, from the world. Mm. Then thereafter, I I actually had this vehicle driven out to Bangkok. I'll, I'll, I'll show you some photos where it's really interesting. Where uh, we really drove up the to Bangkok. Okay. Then after that, uh, the vehicle was there for about uh, eight months. So where, question, question. Mm. You're you're not afraid of like breakdown in the middle of the road or you know in the middle on the way there, like. Uh, so for okay, me, so, a lot of people will think that, you know, break, break down, what, what would you do, you know? Okay, I've always been... Uh, yeah, okay. but that said, uh, uh, even though I have a certain level of uh, experience with uh, this particular model of the vehicle, uh, I wouldn't dare to take it on such a long journey mm. had I not owned it long enough. Okay. So like, for example, this particular vehicle, because I actually drove it in Singapore for about four years or so before I, I, I took up that journey, Okay. Uh, during these four years, I had my fair share of breakdowns. Basically, <laughs> yes, correct. So, so, so one year eight. So time. every time wow. there's a breakdown, uh, with instead of having it brought to the workshop, uh, I would actually bring it back here to my garage. Uh, so during my free time, I would try to find out exactly what this. What happened? Yeah. So what what what, what was the what was the cause of the breakdown and then how to solve it? So. Uh, being being part of this the the Land Rover series community is very helpful also because everyone will share the experience. I see. Yeah, so you hear you they will give some suggestions. You come in and try. Uh, you order some parts. You know yeah. the parts typically take about a couple of weeks because we have to ship it in from the UK. Okay. And yeah, so it's basically the learning process. Okay. And I think what's interesting is that the more breakdowns you have. Uh, your level of confidence actually goes up. Ah, uh, it's coming. Yeah, correct. And you know exactly what's the problem. So, um, you know, having that level of confidence and having that level of knowledge or experience. Yeah, and the good thing about vehicles like this, everything is fuel repairable. 
Uh, you just need simple hand tools. You can yeah, because basically. Because it's manual, right? It's, like, ve it's very basic, lor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very. So how long can this this car this car can be here for like forever? Yes. Yes. So oh. being on the uh, it's currently now on a classic vintage scheme. Mm. Uh, so what we do is uh, we still pay COE, mm. but that's ten percent of pre prevailing rates. Mm -hmm. Uh, road tax is rather affordable. It's two hundred eighty dollars a year. Uh, insurance, I'm paying about hundred eighty dollars a year. But, but you can only drive a yes. certain number of. So time, the right? limitation is that you can only drive it twenty eight calendar days a year. Twenty eight. Twenty eight days. Okay. Uh, you can you can buy additional coupons. Uh, but up to a maximum of forty four days. Any problem registering this car when go uh, go to no. Thailand? Uh, no, because uh, in fact it. The, the lock card that it has is, is very similar to a normal uh, okay. private vehicle. When you travel overseas, yeah. so you only bring this fellow one time only? Uh, oh. For long trips, yes. That's the, okay. that's the longest trip. Uh, in fact, uh, I was quite fortunate to have it, did the return trip from Bangkok back to Singapore. That was in December 2019. And if you think about it, it is exactly... Couple, uh, before COVID before there! COVID, yes, correct. So, had I not done that trip, the vehicle would have been stranded there until today, which is like two years later. True. Right, right. Oh so, yeah, yeah. So the timing was was immaculate. Just nice. Yes, correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So I, I I think the the review was crazy. I I just took a just spend a couple of minutes to show you the engine bay. It's immaculate. It's it's it's, it's, it's it, it, it's almost like a new car. Is it? Actually, it's very empty, huh? Yes, yes, it's very simple and basic. <laughs> Engine looks like the one on on board the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are simple first words. So you are a mechanic yourself? Uh, I would say I I was never a a, a, a trained mechanic, mm -hmm. but uh, my mechanical skills would be very specific to just this vehicle itself. Uh, I know I have a lot of friends that say, "Hey, Jerome, you." You, you know how to play around in cars, right? You know, my car is this problem. Can I take a look at my vehicle? I said, uh, unfortunately, my skills are limited to only uh, my model of the vehicle and, and more specific to my own vehicles because those are the vehicles that I've been playing around with. Okay. Uh, modern vehicles, I I haven't really I haven't really had much experience on them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say, um, my interest in, in, in mechanical knowledge is really to support my my passion in keeping such vehicles and interestingly my passion in keeping these vehicles is also to facilitate or to to, to allow me to pursue my passion for adventure okay yeah. so i think adventure comes in many forms yes uh adventure most of us we will have the mentality that, oh you know you have to go out do something really scary you know, out, no. in the, out in the outdoors. Yeah. You know. uh, I think adventure is about venturing into the unknown. Mm. Uh, anything that is where uh, there is some risk to it, uh, there is a lot unknown to it, it's really an adventure to us. Yes. Uh, it could be in an urban setting yeah. or it could be in anywhere. Mm. So for me, uh, adventure is to be able to venture into the unknown, yes. to see new things. Yes. Uh, so doing overland trips you know like where you drive out uh, to, to different countries you meet different people mm. this is really about venturing into the unknown yes. and of course to up the adventure level you basically bring like a vehicle you know like uh, which of course if you do an overland trip in a Toyota things will be a lot more stable yeah try. Yeah. yeah yeah I get what you mean I get Correct, what you mean but it's it, like you yes. are really pushing your limits you know like yeah. okay but you know, there's a very interesting thing like how uh, if you go on an overland trip in a Land Rover, yeah. you will make a lot of friends along the way. Exactly. One of the reasons is that uh, the Land Rover has a very strong uh, cult following and oh. in almost every part of the world there will be a club. And interestingly, whenever we hear of uh, people who are doing overland trips uh, coming through here, like for example, uh, in the past three years we've had people driving from Canada to Singapore Ooh, in a Canada. In, yeah, in a Land Rover. Oh yeah, so wow. along the way all the clubs are uh, they'll be so so happy. They'll be so happy to 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 meet up and then like along the way you have any mechanical problem you just call you know everyone will swamp to you you know just to it's like help. an international community. Yeah yeah oh, correct cool. correct this is so yeah. cool but of course if I you if you drive a a Toyota Land Cruiser for example I mean, you will get there uh, in much more comfort, but 
you will probably make less friends along the way because you know if you don't break down you don't have opportunity to interact with new people yeah it's different la. correct but i think you will have a lot of people like when you park you know when you go malaysia or whatsoever you stop by or whatsoever or you stop by at the petrol kiosk i think there will be a lot of people looking at it yes yes uh Definitely. It will definitely it attract will a attract certain, crowd, yeah, yeah a, 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 quite quite a bit of attention. Uh, but I remember when I when I drove uh, the pre restored version of this up to Thailand, uh, the customs officer said because that time he didn't have a roof. Okay. So it was basically open. No roof. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I, I'm sure some clips where I was driving this on the north south highway. The <laughs> rain was crazy. <laughs> And I didn't have a working wiper, <laughs> correct. So I didn't. How can you see? No. So basically, what I did was that I drove and then I looked out, drove ah, like that. Yeah, it was. So it was. It was insane. It was insane. But I, I guess looking Definitely. back, is, is. I mean, it's, it's something to to nice to know. So it's all know. drenched inside. Uh yeah, I was drenched during the rain, but pretty much half an hour later, I was dry. Because, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the screen just. Yeah. yeah. to go with this you know this is really extreme like how many people in singapore is going to do this okay, so, right so actually i when i was uh i i, I did my degree in, in in uk in the uk so in my final year of studies uh when i finished my last paper i actually did a solo uh trip around eastern europe uh that day i remember i i was flying out of stansty airport in london uh so there was there was quite a bit of waiting time so I went to one of the bookshops and then I bought this magazine which was Land Rover Owners magazine. So what's interesting about this magazine is that they will tell you about um, the, the adventures that people do with the modern day Land Rovers. And then the other half of this magazine, uh, they have this part where they actually show uh, projects, restoration projects of all the different owners, how they, they will buy a, a rundown barn find and then they start rebuilding it from scratch you see. Cool. So I, I look at it, I said, oh goodness, this is this is something I want to do when I retire, you see. Like <laughs> really it's it's, it's it's amazing like how you know something so run down uh, and something so simple they could they will actually repair every single thing and then once it's fully done on the road it looks fantastic mm. and and so so it was quite interesting so the fact that you asked about mileage right uh there's this saying in the the series owner they said it's, it's never about miles per gallon it's about smiles per gallon so it's the amount of smiles that you oh, get yeah. out per gallon oh my god yeah so yeah, uh the, true. the journey itself is so enjoyable you get uh. so many smiles so you, i mean you get so much happiness out of it this is pretty much the the mileage that you want rather than the distance it doesn't matter how far true. uh you go you see yeah, yeah. it's yeah. true it's true but yeah. the, the, like a lot of people will drive a very expensive car but uh, their car only gives you very short mileage it's okay it's okay because yeah. they like it they smile like smile with the mileage it's, it's very true it's very yeah. true so i think going back to the the magazine so that time uh you know i i, I looked at it you no know, so it was at the back of my head it was always something that i wanted to do mm -hmm. but uh like most of us singaporeans uh firstly owning a classic to, to own a normal car itself is already a costly, yes, uh, costly yes. thing uh, mm -hmm. to own a classic car and then having the the space and time to actually restore it it's it's, it's a very far-fetched dream yes, yes. yeah so I, I basically left it there uh, and then of course you know I I, I, I I went into employment and then thereafter I started my business yeah. uh, about six years six to seven years into my business I decided that um, you know I wanted to buy something different uh, that was when I was I was deciding you know there were there were two things I wanted to do I said uh, should I buy a boat uh. or should I buy a Land Rover <laughs> yeah. yeah you were asking me to buy a boat again. correct correct so uh eventually why i decide on a land rover you know if i'm busy i i cannot even i cannot even go down start yeah, the engine you know? it's, it's so inconvenient yes uh but whereas like a land rover uh i mean no matter how uncomfortable it is you know it is still you can have still have it in your car park yeah you can still drive it if you want yeah. to so uh and then i actually started recalling my dream uh you know like wanting a classic you know trying to rebuild it 
Yeah, so so that was really the real start uh, of my journey to eventually owning this. Uh. And and eventually owning a Land Rover uh. has actually uh, helped me mm. to start pursuing mm. uh, my other passions mm. which was more focused on adventure and and, and, and hiking and camping. Mm. So because in the past, I've all, I, myself, I was a boy scout mm. and then I've always liked the outdoors, mm. uh, camping, mm, mm. You know, things like that. So uh, after I had my first Land Rover, I, I was very fortunate to be able to join the, C, the Singapore Land Rover Owners mm. Group and it was actually a group of like-minded people who like to do adventure mm -hmm. and at the same time uh, pretty much like me they were in their 30s so oh, you know like I when, actually wanted to ask are you the youngest there? <laughs> uh, no uh, in fact now I would say uh, there's a good mix okay. there are people in their late 20s early 30s wow. there are also people in their uh, late 40s coming through mm. the 50s mm. but interestingly uh, there is a gap in between. That means uh, the members with young kids, they tend not to be very active. Uh, uh, I'll share a little bit more on that later. So what happens is that these like-minded people, just like me where when we were in our teenage years, younger, we like to go camping and hiking. We realise that the passion is still there, but we probably would not be physically as fit as we used to be anymore. So what we do is that instead of having to walk, you know, to campsites, you know, to... to, to to, to rough it up, we actually buy we actually buy a, a off road and adventure vehicle ah. where we can actually load it up with with future comfort. Look at the the Land Rovers that they actually go on trips. Huh? They have fridge in there. They have stoves in there. You know, fridge. Yes, yes. So many fridge, huh? Yeah, yeah. So so like like when we reach the campsite, right? They the hotel room there. You know. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I really like this idea. Maybe. Yeah, it's it's quite interesting. So, I mean, with them, I, I've gone on quite a few of these trips. Uh, so, typically, these trips is, uh, there are two types. Mm. One is what we call a family camping trip. Mm. So, these are uh, milder trips where the journey to the campsite is a good condition uh, route. Lah. That means there, there is some off-roading, some simple river crossing, but uh, no hardcore off-roading where, you know, like the car will be walked down and then you have to use winches to really yank the vehicle none of those sort because these trips are typically to allow uh, your family your yeah. children and maybe your wife you together, to join you and one of the very that. important criteria is that the campsite must have a toilet because you ask any lady <laughs> out there if they so like typically you know you ask your wife can you want to go camping with me the very first question is there a toilet? <laughs> can we shower? yeah so it, it's very normal you know like so, so these are the trips you know uh, that, that, is there a table? Is there a chair? Okay, so tables and chairs will bring everything, you see. But key thing is toilet. Yeah. yeah. You you ask a lady to, squ to squat in the middle of nowhere to, to, to do yeah. that business. You know, it's, it's something that they... It's a big no. It's a big no. So, yeah. on one hand, uh, we try to make these trips uh, uh, less harsh, more enjoyable uh, for the, the spouses and the kids. So, that way, they would be more supportive of us maintaining this mm. hobby. Yeah, yeah. Then of course there will be those Got motive one. <laughs> Actually it's not got no motive huh? You better be careful. Yeah so of course there there are like those extreme trips where uh we we typically go alone. We don't mm. bring our families mm. because uh the, we, we, we basically go through uh, logging tracks, mm. very, very harsh routes uh, where there were ravines that we might have to cross, you know. So the tyres also have to be special? Yes, yeah, so normally for those trips, we would change it to uh, empty tyres, which is what we call uh, mud terrain tyres. Okay. Like on this vehicle now, what you're seeing, uh, this is basically what we call a uh, uh, all-terrain tyre. Okay. Uh, so it's it's okay for uh, some some level of off-roading, but nothing extreme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for those tyres, because they are really not allowed in Singapore, mm -hmm. what most of us do is that when we go on those trips, we we'll travel out of Singapore mm -hmm. with uh, eagle tyres, all-terrain mm -hmm. tyres, mm -hmm. and then our set of mud terrain tyres, we will actually keep it in a tyre mm -hmm. shop in Malaysia. Oh. So we will do the swap out uh, oh. on the way up. And then okay. once we are done with the trip, we will do the swap out again before we come back to Singapore. So everything is okay. legal when we are in Singapore. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you know, I, I think this entire journey of how uh, I can still continue to tinker with uh, smaller things, you know, build 
just to be able to repair certain things, uh, you know, the, the, the fun of, of, of repairing something, and at the same time, the vehicle being the, the mode of transport that allows me to continue to pursue my camping uh, interests and all that. I, I think it's, it's, it's quite an amazing journey. So where is your next uh, adventure? Where is it going to be? Where is it going to be? Uh, okay, so there were a couple of trips that was planned previously. Uh, but I mean, it never happened because of, of COVID. COVID. Yeah, correct. So I think that has shattered quite a lot of people's dreams. In fact, uh, but I think I, what I shared was uh, my biggest dream was really to drive up to London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's still pretty much on the list. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be an adventure trip. Uh, How not, long will you think that it will gonna be taking uh, from here to three London? Three months. I think three months is a very comfortable pace. Uh, in fact, in in Thailand, I have actually bought uh, another vehicle. Uh, I've actually bought a, a classic Land, Land Cruiser, a Toyota Land Cruiser. It is actually a 1985. Uh, very simple vehicle, um, no electronics, but it has creature comforts, proper mm. seats, mm. air conditioning. So what I'm planning to do is, uh, before I embark on the London trip, mm. uh, the vehicle, the Land Cruiser I have in Thailand, is something that I can fly my family into Bangkok. The vehicle is parked in Bangkok. We'll fly in Bangkok and then we can actually do regional trips. So True. like I will drive out from, from Bangkok, I can drive out to to, to to Myanmar. I mean not now because the political situation is not stable, yeah. but you can still drive to like Cambodia, Laos, mm. or, or within Thailand itself. Yeah. Uh, within Thailand it will be nice, you know, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, right. and all these really nice places. Yeah, correct. Yeah. correct. I, I would like to go there also. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think uh you know uh that is the plan now. Uh, nothing is really confirmed at this stage because we really do not know where we can travel. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Most likely will be like maybe next year. Hopefully, uh, finger crossed, you know. Which I so dearly call Camo. Camo is the nickname of this vehicle. Uh, Camo. Why yeah, Camo? Yeah. So the reason why Camo was because before the restoration, every panel of the vehicle was a different shade of green. <laughs> yes, 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 correct. Okay, so, so I, it's actually done by the previous owner. Uh, or the previous owner didn't want it to be, it's just no, like... No, I, I don't think it was intentional. Okay. Uh, it's just that along the way, uh, you know, a lot of patchwork repairs were done. Oh, okay, uh, okay. But it, it, like what I said, the Land Rover will never look out of place, you know. Yeah, it, it will never we, we, call it, we call it patina, you see. Uh, you can actually see the battle scars, you know, like yeah. what they've been through. Yeah. yeah correct, correct. So now that it's the COVID, um, I mean, I, I still keep the vehicles running, you know, uh, occasionally on the weekends, I'll still bring my family out on drives. Mm. Uh, when we go to the beach, we actually bring this vehicle. Yeah, so like, beach, ah? yeah, 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 we will, we will, uh, not everyone up, we will throw in all the beach, uh, uh, beach the beach camp chairs and everything. We go to the beach, mm. everyone will, will have their, 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 their fun on the, on the sand. Then no, but uh, you cannot park at the beach, but. No, no, we, we, we don't have to. Uh, I mean, like we, we do what we can, but at least the you know the most important thing is that the kids will have no worry of of getting themselves dirty at the beach. You know, they will just climb on the sand, they get themselves dirty. After that, they will just come in, hop onto the. It's car. like tuk tuk eh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like like Thailand, you go tuk tuk ka. Yeah. It sounds like tuk tuk. So the kids they love it because they you know they can all be sandy and dirty. They will just climb in. We we'll drive back and then after that, I'll just hold the vehicle down. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's so unique. I think the kids will have a different way of telling their friends, Oh, my dad bring us on this rover, you know, we sitting behind, enjoying the wind. You know, like last time when we were young, we were like, my, my dad has a lorry uh, in the truck. So we actually sit behind. We're so happy because we can like get yeah. the wind, you know, yeah. we are outside. It's like, ooh, so adventurous. It's going so fast. Ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah, so the other thing would be they this is the only vehicle that I allow the kids to, to eat in. So like, you know, any other vehicle they, they, they will never be allowed to drink or eat anything. So in this vehicle, you know like the best. Yeah, I, I mean especially after a beach trip I will buy them ice cream, you know, they will just eat in the car. Then it's then you know idea. like they they'll probably say like uh, oh papa I accidentally spilled then I'll be like, It's okay, no problem, we'll host it. <laughs> Imagine you do it in a modern day vehicle. Wow. No. I, I bet way. The, 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 the dad will be screaming his head yes. off, you see. Yeah, ah, correct. My correct. car! Yeah, yeah, correct. So I, I think the, the other thing that I've been doing now with the COVID uh, 
lockdown, mm. uh, having restrictions of traveling, I'm also taking the opportunity to do some major repairs mm. on some of these vehicles. Okay. Um, so at least uh, I know after the COVID has ended, you know, like when the borders are open. We are ready. Yeah, we're ready to just we are we're ready. Just out. Yeah, yeah, okay, correct, okay. correct. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very good. No. Oh, is that there? Because this engine is very quiet. How to reverse? 